Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through a particular government policy called Guaranteed Income to kind of give you a perspective of how it will, may work, as how is what it what is available currently to support people in, in terms of living everyday everyday lives. I always present a disclaimer. This is one view, and it's not deemed to be the only view. This is one per perspective of looking at the data to kind of to frame it in terms of what is required. I'll talk about a little bit about myself here. I'm a professional accountant trade, but bulk of my experience is academia, industry, and financial solution. I've taught a public finance course in the past for CGA, CPA, Canada, so I'm very familiar with government policies. So let's talk about the agenda. I'll talk about middle income. I'll talk wage growth, I'll talk about job prospects, I'll talk about the middle class, I'll talk about private sector versus public sector, and I'll talk about the issues. The reason why we want to do this is you have to frame everything in terms of government policies and the, old, the overall economy from the private sector, the public sector, and what's required to support various programs. Guaranteed min, minimum income in a nutshell means setting a bar threshold, the income required to cover the day to day living. That's household, that's food, etc., to cover that day to day living expense. In Canada's particular case, we can rebrand it how we want. There's already existing programs that cover different ways to support people based on income. That's the way the Income Tax Act was designed. That's why programs are out there by welfare, uh, guaranteed income supplement to support seniors. It's all to help support people in terms of at an income level. Now, Fraser Institute made a, a good com comment that all governments have paid out approximately 185 billion income support. Really what they're getting at now is they want to take a look at that bucket of income support and reposition it to see where they're going to get bang for buck. It's easier said than done when you have multiple programs that have multiple different users based on different demographic shifts and different aspects of an economy. So really realistically it's a nice objective to achieve but how can it be achieved? It's not easy to do that when you're talking about multiple governments involvement. There has to be an integrated strategy. And worldwide, there's some projects under review, like Finland. I pick on Scandinavia because typically those countries have pretty good social programs, but they also de-incentivize what's happening there. In other words, if you put everybody in the same income bucket, it doesn't increase people to achieve higher results. Basically, people are all lumped in, so why should I do better than Johnny when I'm being paid the same way? So it really is a key aspect of when you start moving people up, that has an impact on productivity, and that's something that needs to be buried in mind. Let's talk about the middle class. Middle class has been shrinking, yes. Income growth has only grown about 20% in the last 15 years. Now that's about 1% a year, but if you frame in the recessions, if you frame in just the overall growth of the economy, we've seen slower growth in any period of time because why? We have a demographic shift from the baby boomers to people are retiring, therefore that spending pattern has changed. This is a key aspect to understand in terms of living wages. If you look at this, this is wages by sector. The sectors that you see the most potential or issues with are typically in the food services, the accommodation, the retail side. So if you're going to push that up, that's going to push up the cost for those businesses. And I'll get into specific details about that, but that's something to bear in mind that most businesses already pay a decent wage. This shows you wages by group. So who's going to benefit the most? It's people between the 15 to 24. Why is that a critical demographic shift? Because that's a key voting group that the Liberal Party and typical NDP Party supporters kind of look at in terms of growing their voters. And that's the area that they're focusing on to support these things. Let's talk about job growth areas because as I said when you frame this, look at what you're seeing in terms of job growth potentially for 2016. Manufacturing public administration, transportation, finance, wholesale, retail. Of that, only one is below a $20 an hour job. That's wholesale retail trade area. This shows you the median income, income growth for Canada. And this shows you basically what it, what's happened since 1981. Now, let's talk about the previous government. The previous government made some in, in, initiatives to help things. They basically helped the low income earners bring 4% after-tax income growth. Well, that's one of the benefits with the, P, the, the, the federal government. And plus, with the HST being reduced, it benefits the low-income people more than it benefits the rich. 
we have a huge gap too that doesn't get discussed here it's one thing to attack the private sector but the public sector wages have to be brought in line in terms of their growth and that's not discussed when they're talking about guaranteed income private sector is a critical driver of any economy it provides the taxpayers dollars to support government services in the past we've seen governments growing public sector jobs at a quicker pace than private sector that makes government unsustainable so supporting guaranteed income programs make it that much more difficult issues facing hiring private sector capital investment are they redeploying capital in their in business consumer demand do they have demand that they need to hire people e-commerce is changing how business operate they need less headcount and it's ta talking about more repositioning of how they're doing that government policy some pensions the trade agreement taxation Con consumer spending comes more in terms of the taxation from the HST side corporate tax it's hydro rates it's all government's policies that will drive hiring this presentation was designed to tell people how guaranteed income works it's been framed that it's going to be the savior for people but what isn't talked about is is how you already have existing programs that need to be either refocused or repositioned it also doesn't talk about that there's a systemic issues related to the overall income growth and the economy that need to be solved the best social program or anything is is a good job the more you support private sector growth the more you can take people off that social the safety net required the more taxation dollars you have, the more you can reposition that to help people in terms of redistribution of wealth. That's not discussed. What's discussed is a quick fix. Quick fixes don't work unless you look at it as the overall strategy, as an integrated strategy from the municipalities to the provinces to the federal government to the private sector to the educational institutes that are producing the grads. We need to take a, a complete understanding of what's required as part of this redistribution of wealth. Thank you.